This is pine needle coil weaving. Learn with a naturalist. And our naturalist today is Sage Harmon. Give a wave, Sage. Hi, everyone. He's the leader of our event. Um, my name is Carrie Winninger. I am the outreach lead for the Center for Environmental Inquiry at Sonoma State University. Um, usually we do these, these events at preserves, so either at our Osborne Preserve in Sonoma, on Sonoma Mountain in Pengrove or our Galbraith Preserve, which is near Yorkville in Mendocino. Um, so we're really happy that during these challenging shelter in place times, we're able to reach people like you and connect in these new ways. So thank you so much for coming on this virtual journey with us today to connect with nature. Uh, usually we'd pass in a sign in sheet, but I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick screenshot of your name so I know who's here, but there's not too many. And that way you don't have to write in the chat box. Um, before I let Sage take it away, I just want to tell you a little bit about the center itself. <laughs> and also kind of how the day is gonna work. So what the Center for Environmental Inquiry <laughs> is, we envision a North Bay that's all working together to find sustainable solutions. So we're inviting everyone to become environmentally ready with us. Um, and what that means is we're building this community of problem solvers and learners across all sectors of society, not just the traditional sector that might be involved in, in uh, nature research. So we're going to provide firsthand skills, uh, understanding of our connection with the environment, and making sure that those experiences can result in sustainable solutions. So we're talking about getting people awake and aware and prepared with knowledge and engaged with skills. And today we're going to teach you one of those ways to really feel nature with your hands, even if you're inside. Um, there's so many ways to get involved with the center. It depends, no matter what age you are, if you are affiliated with SSU or not, you can engage in research. We have training programs like land management and the naturalist program, which Sage was a part of. Um, we have internships and jobs for students. You can attend events like this or help us put on events like this. Uh, we just asked Sage to help and he said, absolutely, I'd be would love to help and share my expertise. Um, you can partner with us on projects. Uh, you can access data. Uh, maybe you're an organization that's in need of an environmental solution. Come talk to us about how to solve that. So the point is, you are important, all of you, <laughs> in addressing these environmental challenges. So thank you so much for being here. So I'm going to just talk about format for a quick second. So this is one of our Learn with a Naturalist events, our most casual Ah, wake up with us today, learn, have some discussion and chat and learn something fun kind of events. So it's about an hour long. Um, it might take a little less, maybe a little longer. And what we're going to do is have Sage give us an introduction about who he is, his experience with the center, um, his experience doing pine needle weaving. And then after we get out of that, it'll probably take like 10, 15 minutes at max. Um, then we're just gonna jump into doing the craft and he's gonna teach us how and we'll give, he'll give us feedback. Um, and then we'll have time just to chat and ask him questions about what it's like to be a naturalist. If we could be at Osborne Preserve right now, what might we see? Um, it's really open-ended. So really feel free. I would love to keep everyone's video and audio on the whole time because it's supposed to be a, it's as if we're all hanging out together right now. <laughs> so um, other than that, um, I will let Sage take it away. And if you have anything that you need and you just don't want to say out loud, you can feel free and put it in the chat box. Uh, that way I'll see it. Um, but otherwise, just feel free and speak up. Thank you. Hi, Hello. everyone. I'm Sage. <laughs> And yeah, if you have anything to say, feel free to just with me. I don't have a problem with blurting out. If you have something that you want to say or need to, that needs to be said, feel free. This is like an open discussion. So with that being said, my name is Sage and I've actually been a naturalist at the Fairfield Osborne Preserve for three years. So uh, throughout that three years, there's been some interruptions here and there with wildfires and now with the virus that we all know is going around. Uh, I haven't been up there in a while, but that doesn't mean that it didn't have an impact because here I am teaching y'all how to make some pine needle baskets. And I actually started making pine needle baskets about a year ago when I took a class, a Native American art history class. Mm -hmm. And for our final assignment, we had to make an art project using indigenous techniques. So I, I've, always, I've always heard about the notorious basket uh, 
weaving of the Americas. So I did some research into it and it seems like it was actually a really easy thing to learn. And it looks a lot, a lot complicated. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. So that's kind of my background on um, pine needle art. But I have had um, some experience teaching um, other arts and crafts. I did do a workshop down in San Diego, gathering native clays and making clay pots as well. So mm -hmm. that was also fun and also is a indigenous um, way of life. So uh, does anyone does anyone have any, uh, concerns up front about pine needle or any questions, anything before we get started? Alrighty, so we're just gonna go through a little slideshow that I put together for us today. And we're gonna learn a little bit about pine needles very briefly um, about the history of the baskets. And um, we're gonna start off with noting that these baskets are one of the oldest known art forms like that have been discovered. In fact, actually like recently, pine needle baskets that have been thought to age around 10,000 to 12,000 years old have actually been dated to be twice as old carbon dated yeah. to be twice as old. So that's like insane how long these um, artifacts will stick around if properly maintained. Um, and especially in California, these items were very important. So they would have been used in food gathering and storage um, as well as more so later on in history as an income generator because um, with the European expansion came a high demand for these like novelty um, artists, art pieces. And no one could weave like our uh, Miwok friends, right? So they were, they are world renowned weavers and some of their weavings actually today go on auction for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and if you actually look, um, we have some examples of the baskets that they would have made. They're absolutely stunning, like absolutely beautiful works of art. Um, and their styles were influenced a lot by the demand of the, the European market. So um, to the right, that picture of a woman with her beautiful basket, that's pretty big um, and pretty ornate. And something like that might not have been used in day-to-day -day life, but would have been created to actually get um, some sort of monetary um, um, income from that. So there's a long history of these baskets being used and collected. And um, so moving forward, there's actually not a lot that you need to do these basket weaving, uh, this basket weaving. So I think there might've been an email sent out um, regarding some of the materials that you needed. So. Does everyone have some sort of natural fiber? I'm using pine needles, but you can use grasses or sedges or rushes as well. Does everyone have um, a fiber? Yes. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So the pine needles uh, are what was a lot of times traditionally used. They're really flexible. So I have some here that I've just soaked this morning actually. I got up this morning and collected them, and soaked them for a little bit in some boiling water and some lemon, just for some, I don't know, aromatic experience, right? Mm -hmm. We experience things through all of our senses. So I put some lemon in there to kind of clean them off, but I haven't done anything other than that. So we're gonna prepare our needles. Um, and so we can start off with the needles. Does everyone have string and all the other supplies here? String, the string can be any sort of yarn, twine or natural hemp, any sort of, any string will work. As I mean, I have thread, sewing thread. Yeah, that would, that would <laughs> totally work. And it's pretty actually pretty cool because the different thread that you use or the different string that you use will give your um, basket a different look. So if you use a colorful yarn, that will show up as like a pattern on the outside of your basket um, weaving. And I have one here that I use just some natural fiber. I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh yeah. So you can see this is the pattern, the base pattern that we're gonna be making. So if you want these lines here to be a certain color, 
that's what you would want your string to be. So you could do pink, purple, blue, rainbow. And does everyone have a needle? I just have a paper clip. Alrighty, paper clip. Yeah, so <laughs> when I first did this, I decided I would go whatever, it, whatever term you want. I call it um, primitive, but I actually made my own paper clip. And what you can do is if you can straighten out the paper clip. <clears throat> So if you straighten out the paper clip and then I actually am using, it's not a paper clip, but it's a different wire. It's like kind of the same kind of wire. And if you make like a small, I'm not sure if you can see that. You can't. But if you, yeah. make small, if you just put it really close to the camera, I was starting to see it. Oh, okay. Perfect. Here. Oh yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. So I just made one small loop. There's no adhesive or anything. But I made the small loop with just a pair of scissors. I kind of like looped it around. I'm not sure if that would be possible. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have the names up on everyone. I'm Cherie. Okay. Uh, Cherie? Cherie with a J. Oh, Cherie. Okay, perfect. Hi, Cherie. So do you think that you would be able to make a, some sort of needle implement or something? I think so. Alrighty, perfect. And if that doesn't work, if you have some sort of um, super glue or something, you could always glue the um, thread or like the um, string to the end of your paper clip and just use it like that. If if it became desperate, if times became desperate. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. And the next one is a straw. I actually just this is like an old straw that. It's just a plastic straw. Luckily for um, urban foragers, it uses something you can find on the ground pretty much everywhere, <laughs> sadly. Um, so it's always good to reuse, reduce, and recycle, right? So you're gonna wanna cut off an inch and a half of the straw, and this is gonna be kind of, uh, it's gonna keep, you're gonna put your pine needles in this straw, and it's gonna keep the consistency of the coil oh, all the same. Nice. Yeah, so it's going to make your basket look really, really neat. Cool. So if you just want to cut off like a little bit of your straw. I've used a bone for this in the past when I was really trying to be primitive. I used a bone and a piece of copper wire I found at the beach for my needle. <laughs> now I have on the list that glue is optional. That's just totally optional um, if you want to secure your knots, but um, I'll go over what we can do to actually make your knot secure, kind of like tucking them in um, into the needles as we go. So glue is optional if you have it, great. If not, also great. And then of course, creativity. And this can take some time. So we're gonna have to have some drive, some inner drive, okay? But it's Sunday, we had rest yesterday. It's Saturday, we've all been at home. So we're all rested mm -hmm. up. Yep, good mm -hmm. day for it. Yeah. Alrighty, so I cleaned and prepared my pine needles. I told you that I just used. Oh, this picture is so bad. I'm so sorry. I don't know why it's so not focused, but that's a pile of pine needles in case you haven't seen a pile of pine needles before. Um, and I just rinsed them off, put them in some boiling water, like I said, with some lemon. And now they're pretty much damp and flexible but they still have that little cap on there. So if you can see, here, let's bring this. If you can see here, the caps where all the needles are connected is still on there. And as we go, we're gonna be taking those off. So it helps to kind of have them soaked or moistened so they come off easier as well. So here's some the start of our tutorial. Is everyone ready? Everyone? Yeah. Good to go. Oh, I was just going to ask about the string six feet. Okay. Yeah, six feet or what, whatever is comfortable because you can always add in more string as need be. So I'm just yeah. going to take a nice big arm's length. And cut up a piece. How long do we have to soak the needles for? I only soaked mine for about an hour with boiling water. 
I just okay. poured two pots of boiling water on top of them in my sink. Um, but I know a lot of people soak them overnight. But for me, these are working. And in the past, even um, collecting them after it rains saves a lot of time. So <laughs> there we go. Can we still do it? Thank I think you. I haven't soaked them yet. We haven't yeah. soaked them yet. So can we? Can Can you bend them like this without them breaking by chance? Yeah, one minute. If you see on my video, I'm kind of bent, just bending them. If they're bendable and pliable without breaking, if they're not too brittle, they should be good for your basket. Okay, we'll be all right. <laughs> okay. Do they look good? Huh? Yeah, they can bend. Perfect. Nice. Okay, that's So good. mine didn't. I had, um, I thought I was going to use dried rushes today. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And when I bend it, I don't know if you can see, it snaps. <laughs> oh, no. So, so what I did instead was I, I just experimenting. I went and got fresh green rushes. And I'm just going to see if I can weave with the green material. Right? Yeah. I'm, a lot of times people weave with the green material. The only thing is if you're going to weave with fresh, like fresh green material, is that it will shrink mm. when it dries. Uh, so you're going to want to really weave like tightly as you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Let me oh, and can you just really quick, even though no one else is, is doing that, but someone might um, who watches this later, um, what's the plastic bag option? Yeah. So if you don't have access to the outdoors or um, access to some sort of long natural fiber, you can always use a plastic bag and rip it into strips or cut it into strips. And I've seen people make bath mats with these, door mats with them, and they're really durable. Um, and you just use the bath mat the same way as you would a pine needle. So it's like a substitute for a pine needle. But it's something that can be recycled and something that I think a lot of people have lying around the house. Mm -hmm. So cool. if you don't have access to a natural fiber, plastic bags are the way to go. And I might argue, as Sage had told me earlier, that this is still connected to environmental solutions because we have too many plastic bags. <laughs> so put them to use and it could even be, you know, a reminder about how many bags we have. And yeah. every time you see it, you can think about that. Yeah, actually I just saw on my Facebook a couple days ago that because we're all stuck in our houses, um, one of the girls I follow started making plastic bag crochet blankets and was distributing them to um, homeless people. Oh. So, I don't know, there's definitely a purpose in plastic, right? <laughs> if you have it. Alrighty, so if we have all of our materials together, let's get started with our basket weaving. I'm gonna just start off by gathering, if you have enough fibers, just get them all bundled up. <clears throat> And like I said, we're going to be removing the caps off of these. So this is just something, unfortunately, that has to be done. Um, and you can use your fingernail to kind of just scrape off the cap. Or if you're lazy, like I am, you can just cut the caps off altogether. Like this. So I have this like flush edge right here of needles. So now we're going to take the straw that we have and take the needles and just push, push them into the straw. You're going to want the straw to be filled with needles. So it's like tight with needles, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here, let me, I feel like my lighting's bad for this. There, can you see it better that's now? better, yeah. Okay, yeah. You can't see my face, but that's okay. So you're going to want to make it tight. Um, so if it's not tight, you can always add more needles to that. And that's just gonna be the baseline of how thick your coils are gonna be. So I'm gonna add some more to here. Sage, could, is there any way we can stop screen sharing and see you big? I, maybe there's oh, something yeah, I course. can do. And I haven't figured it out. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, here, let me, 
Is that the end of your PowerPoint? Or do you have more? Uh, there's there's some more like slides, but it's basically just I can totally narrate it and go back show. And I think it's better to show you than yeah. to just have words up on the slide. So let me quit the screen share. I'm gonna try and get creative and put some of these brown ones in and see if the green ones support them because I don't have enough green. Let's just see what happens. Okay, let's see. I don't know how much. Oh, no. Can everyone see this? Yeah, so then I think at the top, you can just say stop screen share. Yeah. How many times? If you just tap Sage's image, then he'll come up big and then hit the minus, and then all the other ones will disappear. Does that make sense? Just tap Sage and then he'll come up big. What would it now would be done? Ah, uh, okay, thank you. Can you see me, everyone? I don't know what's going on. So you're good. Sage, you did what you needed to do. Now everybody on their own screen, there's different views. So if you go to the top right, you might see gallery view or you might see speaker view. If you want to see Sage large, then make it speaker view. put into the straw how many pine needles how many pine needles so i can you see what's going on here here let me put it down i just have enough so that this straw is filled with pine needles you want it to be like pretty tight with pine needles so as many as you can shove into your straw Feels like I can fit so many more than I thought I would. Yeah, you can, you can, you can <laughs> keep fitting them in too. It doesn't have to be like too tight, but just enough that it's like, that they're in there and that's gonna be like a consistent, like girth of your coil. Yeah. As long as you got it consistent, as long as you can keep it consistent. So we'll wait for everyone to get their straw loaded up with. That looks good right there. Whoever is showing me their their straw, is that paper with the needles on it? My, mine is paper. Yeah, okay, perfect. yeah, I was, we were talking about it, that that would work, so. So once everyone's off the step, just let me know and we will move on to the next step. So the next step, I'm just gonna move on to the next step. I will, we're flexible. So if I'm moving too fast, if I'm moving too slow, feel free to say something, okay? okay. But the next step is we're going to want to make sure that this, the end, the short end of the needles, this is gonna be the start of your basket right here. So we're gonna want that to kind of all be the same length. So I'm just gonna cut them all to be the same length. And then what I'm going to do is take my string. Let me see what the string is. And now to secure the string right to like the, this is going to be the front of your basket. This is going to be like the foundation of your basket. So you want your string to kind of be secure here. So I'm going to split my pine needles down the middle. I'm not sure if you can all see this. Mm -hmm and just bring it down the middle. And that's, just, you're gonna split your needles in two. So you can kind of see my, my strings going through my needles. 
and then we can start wrapping. You're gonna to wanna to wrap about a good inch, inch and a half of needles on the end, and that's just gonna be the support. That's gonna become, let me show you on this example. You can see like right there in the middle, there's a whole area that's just covered up with my thread. So that's what we're making right now. It's like that little center part. Now, just for people who may have been looking down at their straw, how did you initially put the thread on? Did you wrap it around? Yeah, so to kind of hold the thread in place, I took the string and I brought it through the middle of my pine needles. Like oh, I see. So the end that you're holding on the other side, it's just like a little little blip of string on the other. I see. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's just like one little blip of string on here. And we're going to cut that off later, so. Are you using your needle or you don't have your needle on yet? I don't have my needle on yet, okay. no. No, because right now we're just going to be using our hands to coil it up. How many times do you wrap it around? So you're going to wrap it around, and I'm going to do it right now, just until it's about an inch, to an inch and a half um, of just pure coiled, um, pine needles at the end. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll, sh I'll kind of show you how to do this. So we're just going to coil it all the way to the end. And I'm just using cotton cord, just like a really thin, fine cotton cord that I got at Michael's. I know a lot of people use, I think it's called raffia. It's, I'm not sure if raffia is like a natural fiber or not. Mm -hmm. It is. I remember using that in elementary school when I learned. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of see pretty soon your string is going to start building up on itself. And you're going to come up with, it's going to be like a little thing of just completely string at the end of your basket. And we're wrapping all the way to the end of the needles? Like pretty much all the way. I'm gonna leave a little bit like half an inch or so at the end, just cause I'm gonna secure, we're gonna be securing our needles kind of the same way that we did in the beginning, bringing it through the needles. That makes sense, like over and over again. I'm not sure if you can see here. You can see like this string, I brought it through the needles. Yeah. And then we can finish that off with just a simple, over like just a simple overhand knot, a regular knot. The knot here is like the knots are not too specific. Like is anything that holds it in place here is gonna be fine. It doesn't the center here is pretty protected. It's gonna become protected within the other coils. So you don't have to be too worried about oh is it secure enough now or or whatnot. How's everyone doing? Good. Dude, I'm making some um, changes because I'm using redwood. I, I didn't have pine needle. Oh, that's cute. Speaking it a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the pine needles, uh, the redwoods probably smell better than mine do. Are they mm. fresh? Are they fresh redwood? Yeah, they are. They're green. So, yeah. Nice, nice. Experimenting. Yeah going rogue right now. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, see, once you got the end secured, like I said, glue is optional. I'm probably just going to seal mine off with some glue, but it's totally optional. Or if you really want it to be rustic, you could use redwood sap or like some sort of pine resin, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. I might have to try that. I don't have a pine tree around me though right now. By the way, you might hear some hummingbirds because I just put up a hummingbird feeder yesterday. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's like right on my ceiling right there. 
I can't see it, but I hear them. Well, it's like right there, right huh. there. They, they keep checking, they keep coming and checking it out, but I'm here <laughs> talking, so they're not, they're like, whoa, a new food source. But there's a <laughs> random guy sitting underneath it. What's going on? <laughs> Oh, I just heard one. Oh, there's one right there, y'all. There's one right there. There's one behind me. Oh, I love hummingbirds. Are, is anyone ever afraid that a hummingbird's gonna poke their eye? That's what I always feel like. Cause they're kind of inquisitive, don't you agree? Like they'll come in. They're know. brave. Yeah, they are. Cause they know they're really fast, they can get away. The only bird that can fly backwards, like legit fly backwards. Wow. Like, some can kind of go backwards, but not. So if everyone's gotten this far, we can move to the next step. If not, we can always wait. I have some cool plants to show you too. I have like this little propagation of this purple plant going on, so. Nice. I know, right? It's pretty. Thank you. Do you want to see its healthy roots? Look at those roots. Oh, good job. Wow, amazing. Is that a coleus? Is, I, I don't know this is. I got this from a woman on the side of the road, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea. I think she called it a purple passion plant. I think it's in the same, it's like in the same family as like a sunflower or something. That's what I read up online. Huh. Who knows if it's true. It was online, so it must be true. Uh -huh. We'll forget about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we're ready, we can move on to the next step, which is we're going to be Folding our, this is like gonna be the base. This is gonna be our like home base of our basket. So we're gonna be folding it. Actually, no, before we do that, we're gonna get our needle and thread on here, or our needle on here. So I have my needle in my shirt. Big needle. Hey, just at the end of the thread that's connected to the basket. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so it's still the same thread that's connected to the basket here. Although I'm gonna need some more thread real quick, so. I was finding the same thing. I used yeah. more than I thought. Yeah. I hear those birds. You know, I don't know what kind of birds they are. There's a um, black Phoebe over there, which is really cute. That was like the first. Those are at the preserve. Yeah, I know. You always see them like, going to catch flies and stuff or whatever they eat. Well, speaking of birds, yeah. So I have, I like set up myself up here today out, outside and I left my bagel out on this table and I got back and my bagel's gone. <laughs> and it's on the ground, like looking for it on the, it's on the ground, and there's no birds to be found except for two crows that are on the roof looking at me. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Didn't take like, long. <sighs> no, it didn't take long at all. It was like not even 10 minutes. It may, may have been 10 minutes. I don't know. My fault. Alrighty. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Are you ready to move on, everyone? We're ready. Alrighty, perfect. Alrighty, so now we're gonna fold that little section that we've covered up in string, fold it in half. And we're not, we're still not gonna be using the thread yet, and we're just gonna wrap kind of where those two come together. We're gonna wrap those to hold that loop. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna hold the loop. And now we have the base of our basket. That's gonna start the coil process. 
So I guess I'm gonna go over this now because it's gonna come up soon as we start weaving and as this picks up, we're gonna have to add more needles to our straw. So we can go over that now. It's really easy and it's like, doesn't have to be, like you don't have to keep like the number of needles the same at all times. Like that's not, not an issue at all. But I'm just gonna take a few needles, decap them. And see, this is probably a good reason to um. I, uh, oh. do you secure this in place with a knot? I'm not securing it with a knot right now. I'm just leaving it right now. Just hanging loose. So you can see my thread is just loose here. But where did I put those? So if you want to add in more needles to your straw, because as you move on, it's going to taper out and things are going to start looking real loosey goosey so you're going to want to add in some more pine needles and you can take three or four just a little bit at a time and add them in to the straw just gradually as you go so like every few coil every few stitches you go just add in two or three pine needles and you'll be good throughout the rest and eventually it's going to be like super long and tapered out here like on this side of like the outgoing side of your basket and you'll just be able to keep adding in pine needles adding and adding and adding in as you go so you can just keep making the basket as big as you can and yeah how far do you push the the needles in do they go just to the top of the straw or all the way to the head of the coil no not to the head of the, yeah so just so that they're into the straw not even to like the not even so that they're exiting out of the straw, but just so that they're in there and like being held securely in there. Um, and at this point, we're gonna start doing some stitching. If we need any clarification on adding the needles in at any point, feel free to just give me a little shout and we can, I can like direct you on how to do that. But right now, we're just gonna do the same little motion, and we're gonna start our first coil right now. So I'm gonna, so you're gonna fold it in again. So does that make sense? We're gonna keep folding it in the same direction, like a spiral. We're gonna start our little spiral right now. And I probably should have cut off some of these extra needles down here, but that's okay. And once you have kind of, it folded over. You're gonna take your needle. Oop, my needle's stuck in some wire right now. Give me one sec. You know, once this whole shutdown is over, there's a really cool exhibit in the, like, I, I don't know what museum it is in Oakland. I did like a, somehow I like snuck into this museum and they had this huge, it was like, I don't know what it was, but they had an exhibit full of baskets of Native American baskets. And it was absolutely crazy. It was like, these baskets were as big as bathtubs, some of them. It was really cool. Of art? Is there a museum of art in Oakland? Does anyone know? I don't know. I'm sure there is somewhere in Oakland, a museum with art in it. So now we're going to take our string and just kind of place your needle in the center and just make like the first initial initial stitch see how the see how the string moves along the needles and you'll i think you'll soon begin to see kind of the pattern of the stitch so i just made my first stitch and you're going to just bring it around i'm not sure if anyone can see what i'm doing right now Sure, yeah. And you can see I kind of got these sections looped down and secured into the coil. That's, does that, does everyone, everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Paige, how do you start it? Do you take the needle in between the needle, the pine needles? Yeah, so if you, look like in the center there's kind of like two sections i just i'm just doing my first initial stitches through the center hole here like oh, okay. okay yeah got it 
Yeah, and then like while we continue coiling, I never bring my needle through through the needles. I bring it like through the gap in between our coils. Okay. Thanks. Paige, are, is the string um, lying right flat next to each other, the loops next to each other, like when we were coiling the end, or now is it now individual stitches you can see? Now they're going to start being individual stitches that you can see. Um, so, I mean, you could totally actually do it, continue to do it side by side, and that would just create the look like your basket would be completely whatever string that you're using. Yeah. Um, but yeah, right now I'm, I'm starting to like make them about a centimeter apart, or maybe less than that, I guess. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, you're going to start seeing some space in between stitches. And then of course, as you go and you get closer, you can just move, slide your straw down, add some more needles, and then keep going. If the whole process isn't too hard. It's just time consuming. After and it a while. seems like you also could strategically place where you're um, putting your stitches. Yeah, exactly. So like, you're going to want to put your stitches, like they're all going to line up eventually. You're going to put one stitch as soon as you start getting into like the second and third layer. Mm. You're just going to put stitch, like you're going to stitch right behind each one. This is like a game, like how many times can I say the word stitch? But, and it will start creating this little pattern. Or you can just be random about it and create a, just a random pattern of stitches all along your little basket. I've got to add some pine needles into mine, so. Sage, one of my daughters had an interesting question. She was wondering um, what people used instead of thread before they had thread, if you know. I don't know what they used up in Northern California. I grew up in San Diego, so I do know that down there that they actually would have used the yucca fibers. Mm -hmm. So the leaf of like a yucca would have, they would have pounded it on a wooden, like on a log and the fibers, like the pulp of the plant would come out and the strong fibers would be left behind. And then they do like a two coiled twist to form a rope. But I don't know, I don't know if they, they don't, do we have yucca up here? I don't think so. Maybe they would have traded for it. There's no native yucca up here, I don't think, but there's, there's definitely yucca that's here now. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I could look that up though. Do we want to <laughs> see what that is? It's a cool question. Yeah, that's actually a good, question. A good question. Curiosity. What about um, deer sinew? That would that have been used? Does anyone know? I don't. I don't know. Maybe. It's actually a really good collection of native pomo baskets out at the Fort Ross Museum after this is over and you can go out there. It's a little teeny museum, but a really good collection of beautiful Pomo baskets. Great, thank you. Nice, yeah. I will get out there. I have no idea where Fort Ross is. Is that north or south of us? North. Oh, okay, north. On the coast. Okay, I think I've seen, I think I've, I've heard of Fort Ross before, but I've never been there. Now I have a reason to go. <laughs> So I've been adding in some needles. I'm just going to continue on with my stitches. And how's it going for you, Kaylee, with the rushes or with the reeds? Yeah, so it's, it's a little challenging because I had to add in some of the brown ones that weren't, that were breaking just because I didn't have enough green ones. But mm -hmm. 
I think it's going to work. I just have to be really careful. And the green ones are supporting the brown ones a bit. I yeah. don't know if it's going to last a really long time, but uh, I was just, I think it's just going to go slower. But um, so far, nothing's totally broken. Well, as long as you get like the motion down, then you can, you can like work with what you have once you have like mm -hmm. this motion down. Yeah. And I, that's what I'm thinking of it too. I'm learning today and I can always go collect something else later. Yeah, exactly. Well, what I want to do is I want to go back down the prized pine needles that were coveted like by everyone were the Tory pine pine needles of Southern California. And those are, I think they're critically endangered now. There's only two spots that they're left. There's like a one bluff in San Diego. And then I think there's an introduced colony in Santa Barbara. And of course they're like suffering with all sorts of pests and beetles and whatnot. Fungus. Well, that actually brings me to a great segue to say, does anybody, while we, I think we've all kind of gotten the idea now, if anyone has any questions, of course, about the weaving, go ahead and ask him. But uh, maybe this is the good time too to also say, hey, we've got access to a naturalist right here. Does anybody have questions about the outdoors or, you know, the preserve, the habitats on the preserve or? Any anything about the program itself? Who knows? Anything you want to ask Sage? Feel free and open it up to more than just the craft. I guess at this point, uh, I've I've got a quick question. We we've, we've fallen behind considerably here. <coughs> we we've had to redo a few. So, um, when, when you bend the hoop over, it, 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 we've got to go back to where we actually start threading this thing. What we thread it through? Yeah. Uh, Mm. Yeah, we're a bit, we're, we're a bit behind. No, 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 no problem. Oh, got a hoop. That's perfect. Right now, I've got a hoop. Have perfect. Okay, so I bend it over. Mm-hmm. To like, to like this. Yeah, so you're gonna bend it over so that loop. You're gonna start like coil, like starting like that's a coil. You're gonna start coiling it. Um. So, so the hoop is flat, and then you're coiling around the outside of the hoop like this. Yeah. Can you see? I can this background is really causing problems, isn't it? Amara, yeah, can you turn the background off? Yeah, yeah, there's like a little gap in between the um, yeah, the screen. But it's actually, I think, yeah, 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 you've got it right. You've got it right. So then the needle goes... I just put the needle through that hole, just to start with. Just put the needle through the hole. Straight through the hole. Mm-hmm. Okay. And stitch it. Kind of continue, like, wrapping, kind of. Hi, I'm doing a class. Perfect. We, we got a screaming baby. <clears throat> so it goes through the hole and then round the... And then round... And, and then, yeah, what you have now, now put it back through the hole, back towards you. Back through the hole. Mm-hmm. And then pull it tight. You'll see, I think, if I can see correctly, that, yeah, it should. And then if you pull it tight, you'll see that it would pull the needles closer to the center. Okay. So that's your first stitch, right? And now you can continue. It's not bending very well because it didn't soak for long enough. Can, can I have a look at yours? Yeah, see. of course. So I had mine like my loop is going up this way. So like the loop is this way. Okay. And then I just continue to like, I just fold it and hold it close. And then let me, I'll show you, I'll do a stitch right now. So you hold it, fold it close. And then you bring your thread around. There's not a lot of like free thread. And then simply just bring your needle through that hole and stitch down. And you can just hold it. Hold it tight. Through the hole. Mm. Yeah. And mm. once you have the motion down, it's kind, it's kind of like riding a bike. Like once you get one stitch, you'll see that it's working. And then you'll, you'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. Now, when you get further out, you don't mm. keep going back to that center hole, do you? No. So you can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. But like once you're kind of like, one or two coils out you can start instead of going back to the center hole just go in between the coil that was that's like in front of it if that makes the sense. Mo so just one coil down yeah. towards so the I, center. I'm, I'm no longer going into this hole i'm mm. going 
between these two coils right here. I see. So, yeah. And then I guess the last thing would be just to learn, even though we aren't ready yet, how to end the whole thing. Yeah, so let me see how I ended it on here. You can't really see. But to end it, it's super simple. You're just gonna stop adding pine needles and this end tapers out. So you're gonna taper the end out onto the edge of if you're making mm. a pole or something. It will taper out and that will make it a smooth kind of ending. And then you can just, what I did is you can see here, my knot is still visible. So I have my knot still visible, but I just simply like tied a simple knot. And I tried tucking it into the pine needles, but it didn't work. Um, but let me, we can continue working. And then once I'm like kind of have a little bit done, I can end it for us. Show us how to end it. Oh, and adding more thread, that's going to be a thing soon. So I'm not sure of the, pro like the actual way to add thread, but I do it just by, I take this section that I have, the existing, I only have about like seven inches left here. So I'm going to need thread soon. So I'm going to cut myself a new piece of thread. And then I just tie it on to the existing piece. So like, I just tie it just like a regular knot. I'm not a seamstress or sewer by any means. So I don't know like how to actually add thread into things, but this is the way that I do it. And then you can always tuck in any exposed knots. You can tuck them into the pine needles to give your basket like a clean finished look. But I'm just extending my... Uh, not too good. Yeah, how's it going for you? <laughs> you said not too good. What's going on? Show me. I thought I was on mute. Busted. <laughs> oh, mine. I don't feel like mine's doing too well either, but I'm getting the trick down. Do. I'm not sure if I'm tying it onto the right bit of the hoop. And Here. it's not bending very well because we didn't soak them that well either. So no, I did. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm I actually know. kind of doing something a little different where I'm wrapping the coil like each coil so that it stays together i don't know if you see how i'm kind of just wrapping the fibers <laughs> and that's just because i'm worried they'll fall apart otherwise <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 well it's see you have to adapt to your current situation i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna start over i'm gonna start over so that we can i'm gonna start like a little new basket over okay. so uh. we, can, we can get that get your show on the road as they say right <laughs> I need ice cream too. Yeah, I need ice cream too. Alrighty, so you've got this part down where you're gonna you're gonna make like that string coil right here, right? You yeah. have that down pat. Okay, so ooh. I'm just going to cut the string and then I'm going to show you what to do. So I kind of have like a here and once you fold it in half right I would let me my strings all twisted right now <clears throat> these two need to be joined up so I'm just gonna coil up right here to get these to stay together into the loop so now the loop Mm -hmm. it, it will stay right now if I just let it go. So it's let go. And it's now the next step is you're going to continue the coil. You're just going to continue to coil it in just like that. And 
to put my needle on again. I'm sorry, mate. It seems like it's easier <laughs> the further out you get. Yeah, it is. Like once you get the hang of it, it's it just gets faster and faster. Also, you don't seem to have to coil it as the, the bends aren't as tight. Exactly. So this is like the hardest part is just getting it started. Do you see how I'm holding it? This, this loose end, I'm holding it pretty tight onto the coil, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring the thread over and then bring it through that initial loop, that loop that was formed in the beginning. It's going to bring my thread through there. Ooh, there's a knot somewhere. What's going on? Okay. That happened to me earlier. I was like, that's not supposed to happen. And then you can pull tight and you can see already that's like our first, that's our first stitch right there. Well, I can't believe it, but an hour has passed. So I need to just double check with everybody about um, signing off. Cause I know some people might only have an hour other people might want to stay a little bit longer but I want to see is everybody comfortable could we all hold up like what we've made so far would that be okay like I don't have very much myself so I don't want you to feel <laughs> oh shy God, to everyone actually making baskets but could we like hold on really quick let me see if I can take a little every Sarah's looks really good I'm pretty Here's proud mine. of mine oh look at that one I'm going to explain what happened with mine. I was using some rather thick yarn mm -hmm. and I had the uh, paper clip and it was all just starting to knot up and the um, paper clip wasn't working all the way through. So I went and found some thin thread and I did find a needle. So I'm going to Oh, nice. You know what? Oh, wow. That looks If you have the technique Sarah, down. Yes. Yeah. Wow, and so, Jessica, I like how the little uh, redwood needles are sticking out, actually. That's really yeah, cool. I can okay. just fill it in between. But they'll, they'll probably dry and break off, though, right? I would think. Probably. Oh, probably. And Sarah, is that like, like leather cord or? No, that's black raffia. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, raffia is strong, right? Well, great it's job. really thick, so when I was coiling up in the beginning, it went really fast because it's not, you know, you don't have to do a lot of loops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, with raffia, you can split it, right? Down yeah. the middle? Yeah, so you it could experiment with, like, some pattern or something, like, thin and thick, thin and thick or something. <laughs> or you could, do, you could do the entire outside perimeter of your basket with, like, just the, just the raffia showing. That would be pretty. Yeah, that would be really neat. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so glad you got the technique now. If anybody does have extra questions, Sage is happy to stay a few more minutes, and I am too. Um, but I just want to let everybody know that um, there are other things like this. So I just wanted to wrap up really quick and make sure you all knew how to get to our calendar of events, um, because I don't know how you heard about this program. So um, if you haven't been to the center's website before, it's CEI. Dot sonoma edu and there's a calendar and it'll show you all the different events that we have coming up we have one I mean, quite honestly almost every day <laughs> over the next couple weeks um, and they're really far ranging so for example um, tomorrow we have something completely different it's an introduction to these professional online trainings for things like FEMA disaster training or wildfire fighting um, things that are really different then on um, Thursday we have our education manager coming out to talk about the benefits of the outdoors. And that's more of a lecture format, but there's a discussion at the end where we can have a group discussion about how we feel maybe now that we're not as connected to nature physically and how maybe our health is impacted. Um, and then Friday, we have a dragonfly citizen science event. So what that means is you can take like a smartphone, um, or your computer and there are these apps that you can download that help you identify dragonflies and so um, we have a really great educator actually who lives in New York who's joining to, to lead the event the uh, Kevin Monroe um, and he's just a, he's the director of a preserve at the Nature Conservancy out there so he is going to teach us how to find dragonflies how to make space for them in your yard and how to identify them and learn about them because they're really fascinating 
beautiful creatures. Um, and then all sorts of other things coming up. Um, next Tuesday, we have um, something about historical ecology. So about how humans and the environment have uh, worked together, have been shaped by each other. Um, and then we have more Learn From a Naturalist events coming up. One of them, the Thursday after that, is about our connection to the Sonoma Mountain where the Osborne Preserve takes place. Um, lots of different things, uh, all different age ranges again. And um, I just wanna make sure you know that you can always contact me with any feedback or questions or ideas for things in the future. Uh, we're just so happy that you all joined us today. Um, and so feel free and ask Sage questions about this activity or about the naturalist program, which I'm a huge fan of myself. Um, and like, has anyone actually, how many people here have actually been to the Osborne Preserve? Okay. Oh, okay. Most of you guys. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. What for the kids had anybody come up with a class like at school? We were planning to this spring, but. Oh, wow. Didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because the naturalist program that Sage has been a part of for three years, they lead tours for third through fifth graders in the area. Um, so that's one way a lot of people get introduced to the place. Um, but we also have Saturday tours usually, <laughs> and then all these different events that take place and you can do research there as well. And one thing I think people don't think about is research it doesn't have to be scientific data collection that you might envision as part of a, you know, an undergraduate or graduate project. It can be an artistic research pro project or it can be a humanities research project. So we have people that do photography and they take a photograph in the same place every six months, right? And see how things change and, uh, or people that come up to be inspired for their, for their poetry. Um, all sorts of research can take place at the preserve. So mm. we're well, just hoping that one day we'll get to see y'all up there. But until then, one thing that I would request, if you end up finishing your weaving, which I hope we do, I would love to see photographs. So if you guys want to take a photograph of your coil, and then email it to me. I would love to see it. And if you're happy enough with your coil to be willing to put a picture of it in an anthology that we're creating, then let me know because I would love to include it and say this is one of the things that we've taught people to do and one of the natural ways that we've found to do a craft and connect with nature even when we were sheltering in place. So um, the other things that are going to be in the anthology are going to be things like photographs that people have taken, poetry people have made, short nature essays. Um, so we would love to have a sample of this work as well. So if you wouldn't mind, just let me know whenever you're done. I'd love to see it. And that's all I have to say. So I'm just going to let us all hang out and hear from Sage more and everyone can uh, continue on their arts and questions. But if you have to take off, just let us know and we'll give you a wave. I have a question. I yeah. have a question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you how do you make the bowl shape? So, what can I see? Can I see your coil so far? Have you gotten to like? A, well, it doesn't matter how far you've gotten, but once you've gotten to how big the base of your bowl, however big you want the base to be, instead of coiling each coil next to each other, you're going to start coiling on top. So you're going to start building the coils on top of one another if that makes any sense. I'm not sure if it does. I'm trying to think of a way I can show you. So instead of adding the coils on sideways like this, and adding them on, continuing to make the bottom bigger. To add to the height of your bowl, you're gonna just start adding the coils right on top like that. Is that clear? Looks good to me. Yeah, put your coils on top, clear. And then just keep doing the same stitch over and over and over again. And I guess you could kind of angle it a little bit if you wanted it to be a little bit more of a gradual basket. Yeah. yeah. 
where you could go in and out and make like a little face or something. Mm. It's, yeah, it's pretty creative. It's like pretty creative. You, once you know the stitch, you can make whatever you want. I don't have a photo. I don't have a photo of it, but I used to, um, for my art project that I made, I actually, I'm a beachcomber. I collect sea glass a lot. So I actually embedded sea glass in between the coils along the edge wow. and kind of like bezel setted the coils, like with a coil, I bezel setted the sea glass around the edge. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm sure you could do things like add in other materials like beads or. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Feathers maybe. I was going to add, I was actually going to bring feathers out for this oh. today. <laughs> like a collection of feathers, but. I don't know if that's going to be feasible right now. I'm not ready yet. It takes so much more thread than I think. I know, right? You're like, you'll move through it, so. So, Sage, what's your favorite part about being a naturalist? Well, for me, I've always said that, you like, like you said, we take third through fifth graders out there, and I always say the the next generation is that's like where we have hope for our future so if you can plant a seed like for me i can name people in my life who have planted the seed of like being a nature oriented person there's people i know who like i can think of in my head who made an impact on me and i'm like okay if i can get out there to the preserve takes take out a classroom and one of these kids goes home and says like oh my god dragonflies are so cool <laughs> and then like that could turn into a whole like lifelong passion they'll go to school for environmental science or whatnot and that's pretty cool for, like to know that you can have that impact so that's like the best part about being a naturalist awesome. i also like seeing really cool animals like snakes and stuff what's your favorite animal at the preserve um mountain lion 